Hey guys, so today I'm going to share with you my story of when I backslided. Um, there's been a few people asking me about it, so, <laughs> and uh, you know, if all the glory is to the Lord, then I'm going to go through it. <laughs> it's a, it's a painful, but um, yeah, it's not about me, it's about the Lord Jesus. Um, so, okay, what happened was, this was really um, right at the beginning of my walk, uh, maybe one, one month, maybe two months, it was like real, real soon after I found the Lord. Um, because of my history of um, being involved in the psychedelic trance scene and drugs and going to festivals and stuff like that, um, I still had things lined up, you know, with my old life. I was supposed to go and return back to um, Cornwall where I was living for 10 years to do a video for a festival. I had something else lined up doing video work for this and for that and basically I just um, I cancelled doing any of that because it was so early in my walk with Christ. Um, I was like a moth reborn and I was still putting air into my wings and I didn't want to be around the world too much to influence my form that Christ was wanting me to grow into and this is still the case for me now and so I very much try and avoid the world um, and the temptations of the world so that just helps a lot with your walk with Christ um, so back to the story of my backsliding there was one festival that I had wanted to go to for my entire sort of the 10 years or whatever anyway I just wanted to go to this festival for a very long time and my friend um, managed to get tickets for this festival and this is before I found the Lord and it was kind of like me uh, initiating that with her and then she got the tickets free tickets and so you know, I was like, oh, I, part of me knew that I shouldn't go, um, and then part of me was like, well, you know, it's just me and my friend, we haven't really done this type of thing together, we've been really good friends for a long time, there's a the world convincing me um, that I should go. Now, I didn't really, at that point, I didn't really ask, um, the opinions of fellow Christians in my church. I was still quite single-minded uh, at making decisions willy-nilly. Um, with my walk with Christ, I've started to really develop the um, understanding that things should be spoken about with fellow Christians for discernment um, before any decisions. Um, but I think my pastor knew that it would have been wrong for me to go to this festival but I think he allowed it to ha he was like you know he allowed me to go there to experience it for myself um just how much things had changed for me and uh yeah you know I was so used to this stuff before Christ um these sort of festivals with the psychedelic trance and everyone dressing up and I just thought it was harmless and just like oh magical and stuff like this and you know, I was quite naive, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and when I went to this festival after I knew the Lord, it was like, wow, my eyes had been opened. Wow, there is so much false gods worshipped and venerated. And, you know, there was like people dressing up as Egyptian gods. And, and there was just so much occult symbolism and then you know when I was looking at the um, the peace sign realizing that that was the satanic upside down cross broken satanism and that's to 
show peace. And I, I just saw the false light of Lucifer everywhere and it was just really like wow <laughs> like a whole paradigm shift in me i just saw everything for what it really represented for the first time um and it was dodgy <laughs> it was really dodgy i just was in shock at how much um there was just so much demonic decor um, whereas before I'd have been like, oh, it's really expressive and we need the good and the bad, and, you know, all of that. I was so into all of that. Um, but with, with new eyes, with the Holy Spirit, I just, it was, it was different <laughs> to say the least. Um, anyway, my friend surprised me and turned up, my friends from Cornwall, my pagan friends. And, you know, I was so happy to see them. It had been a while and then... Um, yeah, it, it was beautiful to see them again, uh, but I found it really difficult to talk about the Lord with them, and I, you know, it, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful and uncomfortable situation, and um, oh, I'm getting hot because this is really, um, yeah, this is a tricky, tricky subject to talk about. But, um, yeah, anyway. Right, so. <laughs> um, so I met up with them and had a really nice time. And basically, um, what I wanted to mention was when I was there and I was, I was dancing, I was so aware of the Lord. And I was like, Jesus, I know that, that there is no light here. I know that this is all worshipping Lucifer's light but I am here and I'm worshipping you, Jesus. And so when I was dancing, I was giving it all to Jesus Christ and I was just in constant prayer because I felt like I, oh, you know, Lord, I need you right now. This is um, spiritual warfare to an extreme of just like so much deception, just so much deception covered in, in pretty. Um, so yeah, anyway, time went by and I was having a good time with my friends and then um I was like I was like I was like Eve in the Garden of Eden, right? And I had a drink with them which led to another drink and then I ended up completely um basically revisiting my my old life and I ended up taking substances that I won't go into detail about but I was I got intoxicated and and I basically um it was the worst <laughs> the worst experience by far that I've ever experienced with my walk with Christ. Um I felt like what well, I forgot the Lord. I forgot him. And, um, yeah, I wasn't in constant prayer anymore and I didn't feel him. And I think, I don't know whether it was the Holy Spirit withdrawing from me or me withdrawing from the Holy Spirit. I don't know. But I felt this withdrawal from the Lord, from his presence. I felt the Holy Spirit not, um residing in me as strong I felt that there was a slight withdrawal separation it wasn't like he was gone but I felt him not not wanting to be as close to me anymore and this broke my heart absolutely broke my heart and so we came home um, from the festival and you know I'm keeping my cool and it's really nice to see my friends and all the world and everything like that but all I can feel is how much I love the Lord and how much none of the world really matters compared to the Lord um, and the peace and the love that you feel when you know him and um, long story short I suffered a lot <laughs> because of that and um, yeah I, I know that I, I know that he would have forgiven me there and then when I was so sorry like this but there was part of me that still, because I was a baby, I felt, I went through that whole thing of not feeling worthy again, and then 
feeling like I had to prove myself, which you, <laughs> I look back now and I think, wow, <laughs> I went through so much toil and tribulation and, you know, I was crying for days and I was fasting and I was begging for forgiveness and I know that the Lord would have forgiven me straight away, but there was me going through all this extra works to try and get back to the Lord and, uh, yeah, and uh, during that period of time, it was probably, it was only about three days where it was just extreme regret um, and and fasting and praying and crying, you know. Um, and um, during that point, um, it was when the enemy had a field day, you know, oh, because I didn't feel worthy and we're not worthy, but because I felt like I couldn't call on the Lord because I had done him wrong. I just felt so ashamed of myself. I was like, it was like I felt that, um, you know, when Adam and Eve rebel against the Lord and then they hide themselves in the garden because they're naked and they're ashamed. Well, I was, I, I went through that process of, I can't even call on the Lord because I'm so ashamed and um, that I would rebel against you know, he is just, yeah, I have, I love the Lord so much, and so, when I rebelled, I really, it really broke my heart, and, um, I learnt my lesson, <laughs> I learnt my lesson, that, um, he is, he is number one priority, that all of the f fulfilment in, in the world, and all of this, is nothing, is nothing compared to him, and so, yeah, like what I was saying is the enemy had a field day, right? So, um, I've been having uh, spiritual warfare, as we all do, <laughs> you know, we enter into a battle with Christ and he does the fighting for you, but he builds you and grows you and does the work through you. So you're engaged in warfare, you know, um, and so when I was at that point where I was naked and ashamed and like, oh, I can't even call on the Lord. I had another attack. I've been having like um, all sorts of different sort of attacks, um, waking state, sleep state, or, you know, um, in my mind, you know, we experience so much type of warfare. They always up their tactics, try different things and any crack they can of any sort of um, vulnerability you have, they're going to go there. So yeah and um so i had um a, um like a night terror situation at that point and uh it was something that laid into my in my bed next to me it was very cold and it woke me up when i turned and then it went and i think i was asleep you know it was getting to me in my sleep state but i thought i was awake it was one of those and um it went into my body and started taking control of me and doing like, like it was like, I was doing all these things like rolling cigarettes and addictions and like, it was just grimy and like animalistic how it took over me and really glitchy and it was really scary. And um, I, in that dream, I didn't call on the Lord because I didn't feel like I could. And they knew at that point I was in that state and they uh, had a field day with me, you know, making me feel like I'm possessed and all sorts of my dream and oh, I've had so much um, stuff like that but I've always called on the Lord, you know, and um, that was, that was, uh, they had a great time with me at that point when I didn't feel like the Lord, uh, I didn't feel worthy of his, um, of his forgiveness and that is to think that the Lord died in vain you know he came here and he suffered that but that death to forgive us so we need to grasp onto that with everything we've got and remember that if we truly repent we we're gonna slip up we're gonna backslide we're gonna do things that our flesh wants that the world wants you know that we're not perfect we're gonna slip up we all slip up um but the lord is there to forgive and receive you and often these things that backslide us that pull us back when we're with the Lord again it projects us even further in our walk you know 
God is great. God is great. And um, yeah, I hope you like my story there. That was pretty painful for me, but um, all glory to the Lord. <laughs> you know, um, He truly is a redeemer. And um, yeah, so I love you guys very much, and God bless you all. Have a beautiful day.